as a music writer, you've done me a disservice. See, what you've done is you left a uh, an established band in a cordial and mature manner, like a mature adult, which has left me nothing to write with. How am I supposed to get clickbait yeah. headlines out <laughs> This is bullshit, Josh. Very upset. Oh, yeah. I oh, know. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw like a, an interview I did recently where like they got kind of a clickbait headline out of it, but there was actually nothing of substance in the article to back it up. Can we make one up? Because it's very boring. So maybe like something, uh, bonus points if it involves like cocaine, a car chase. I don't yeah. Know. Like, okay. You, you rack all those things up and we'll go for it. Yeah, hundred percent. I love it because the more fake it is, the less trouble I'll get into from architects from being like, "What have you been saying?" <laughs> and they'll they'll know that it's not true. Yeah, I'll be like, uh, it'll be like in big letters. Did it involve cocaine, ninjas, such and such? And then oh, right, if you, if you involve a like, question, then yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Awesome. I got to get clicked somehow, man. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so it must have been a. You know, a, a bit, you know, obviously that's a big move. Um, and I, I feel like in this day and age, man, you know, when people are making a great deal of money from recording, that's financially, that's potentially a big move for you. How, yeah, how did you yeah. feel? Um, yeah, it is, it is daunting, um, for sure. Uh, I'm just sort of like racking my brains to figure out other ways to support myself you know and um i i do a lot of different things i even before architects um i was doing like mixing for bands production i used to do artwork for bands as well do like digital painting which i don't really do anymore um yeah and i'm gonna be starting maybe like a patreon soon for just like mixing tutorials or just like youtube side of things so yeah it, it is daunting for sure, I, I feel like you've you've got that that profile though that yeah that if you shifted into you know YouTube and and all that kind of stuff, you know I I feel like you've got a you've already got a leg up there that you know yeah is to your advantage. So. And and that is all stuff that I have been doing years anyway, so it's not like something completely new. Like I have built up a YouTube channel since what, 2014, maybe. Mm. Um, so, and, and I have a, like a pretty strong work e ethic, so hopefully I'll just make stuff happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, mate, um, because uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm clearly going for like the highbrow, you know, cerebral, uh, music journalism here. Let's settle this once and for all. What's more metal, shaved head or, or hair? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm biased here, shaved head. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, th I feel like Phil uh, Phil Anselmo did a great service for, you know, for guys. Oh, exactly, yeah. For whatever reason, yeah. you'd shave their head in the 90s. Like, it was just... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Though I have noticed that um, the latest Solosis video, I believe it's your bass player, has an absolutely A-plus windmill going. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's part of why he's in the band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of good footage of him windmilling, like wherever you see us. Yeah, that's why he's there. I have no idea how anyone can focus on doing anything while their brain is just. Oh, I know. Yeah, the washing machine. <laughs> and mate, um, I understand that um, in your please correct me if I'm wrong that in your your last shows uh before your departure from Architects, we're playing with Metallica. Uh, yeah. Dude. Dude. Tell me. Tell me everything. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, it was... Uh, it, it's surreal being on their stage. Obviously, they play in the round, which they've done since, like, the 90s. And I grew up watching all their VHS videos and home videos and, and everything. Uh and yeah, just to be on like that kind of stage is like, oh, this is what it's like to be in Metallica like, on like their stage. Uh, it's definitely weird when you've got, when you kind of don't know where to look or where to go. So you just keep doing a loop, but it's so big that I'd be like 
we'd all have our own station where like my water bottle is and my guitar tuner and my pedals and my mic. And you just sort of all just be moving around. And I'd get to halfway around and be like, oh shit, I've got a vocal coming up that I need to get back to my mic for and like see if I can get back there in time. And I missed quite a few because I was so far away. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's like a huge honor to play them. It's like a dream come true for me. And um, it's definitely like, I could probably compare it to all the things you hear about like Toronto or Slayer. Like they just want to see Metallica. And most of those people, because, um, you know, Metallica is such a big band with such diverse audience and admittedly an older audience or like my age and up um, predominantly that they they might not even know who architects were. So the best you can hope for is just to not get booed. And we didn't get booed. So, yeah, it was great. And uh, we, we had a, a brief uh interactions with them they seem super cool really friendly very hospitable um so yeah it was amazing yeah so mate um obviously solosis um now i i realized that you know you guys have been around for ages i used to have a subscription to metal hammer years ago and so i've i've seen your i would just see your logo all the time and i've seen it you know evolve over the years yeah yeah uh so what it is now but you know i remember seeing your name popping up around you know 2010 2011 so you know you, you've been doing this for a while um yeah you're now you you've you're the sole consistent member of this band what i don't know if this is a stupid question feel free to to hit it on the head if it is but what do you think has made you persevere with this brand as people have come and gone oh uh, i just love it I love the music. Um, it's it has never been any uh, like giving up's just not an option. And for the most part, and this is in no way meant to be like detriment, uh, um, putting anyone else down. But a lot of the lineup changes are for the better. Even if we're still like the best of friends afterwards, it's like if someone is like focusing more on stuff outside the band whilst being in the band or like just their jobs or whatever, or they're, they're not as into touring or whatever it may be. It's better to get someone in who's way more enthusiastic and, or like super enthusiastic about like their instrument and stuff like that. Um, and that's obviously the, the reasons for lineup changes over the years are varying. There's it's not all the same thing, but, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it can be tough to like find the right musicians, and especially when it's not like something that we earn money off like full time. Work commitments, all that kind of thing, that comes up. And I um, built things up, like I said, in my life where I can be my own boss. So I can do. I was always doing mixing for bands, teaching guitar whatever else I can do. Whereas other people in the past have had just like a job and then touring is like, Oh, well I've either got to choose between a job or touring and not making any money on tour or, or a job. So that's what it usually comes down to. But and I've, I've always known that this is what I'm going to do for my life. So I would specifically aim to do things outside of the band that are going to bring in money where I can still tour and not have to worry about the tour paying my rent yeah so what were the uh, regarding um the new album what were some of the biggest challenges i guess in creating um it's putting putting a lot of time and effort into our music is something that we've always done for like a really we've spent we've always put a lot of attention to detail and stuff and we definitely don't oh we've got a few months to write a record let's just go and do it it's always like the focus is writing music all the time. It never stops. And we always want the music to be as good as it can be. But my manager in particular was just like, you haven't reached your potential. Like there might be good riffs and good songs or whatever it is, but like you need to focus on writing an album. that's going to be like a classic metal record, like a record that is undeniably going to like stand out or solidify you guys and people are going to want to keep going back to and like at first i was like oh we've always put like loads of time into writing our music but 
in terms of thinking about all my favorite records or albums that are considered classic i started thinking about those versus the records we've done and i was like oh yeah that's what we're missing like the things can still be like super heavy but like anthemic and catchy so like perfect example to me is like pantera because um even stuff on great southern tranquil is like super aggressive and intense but like the great southern track like the, the song itself like the chorus is like yeah. amazing and it, like but it's still a super heavy song and like we'd had like super heavy stuff but was it anthemic was it catchy like that maybe not or even like um like people equal shit by slipknot it's like super heavy but it's still like anthemic and feels like a, a big memorable song mm. so it, it's trying to those are just two examples because when I say, you know, focus on better songwriting or anthemic stuff, people just jump to like, oh, you want to be like a radio band. It's like, we don't want to be a radio band. We still want to retain being like a super heavy band. But um, in the past, we'd have songs where like maybe there just wasn't a hook or maybe some songs like there wasn't even like a chorus. And that's not always essential. But I think in terms of all the music that I like and always go back to, I, I even if I like really heavy stuff, I like there to be memorable parts and just trying to focus on more memorable stuff and hooky and famic side of things was kind of new for us to really like think about it and in particular um, the vocals because I've always been like a guitarist just like oh yeah as long as the riffs are sick just scream over it, it'll be fine mm. and this time around it's like my manager's like most people don't play guitar. And they're not just going to be listening to the riffs. They want to connect with like the singer and what you're saying. And yeah, I, I'd never put this much effort into the vocals before. So the, the mindset and what we were trying to achieve by trying to like really condense what we do into like a classic metal record and stepping up as a vocalist, um, to really make sure my vocals like connect with people. Both those things are yeah pretty different. This time around. I wanted to ask, like, what were some of your kind of formative gig experiences? Like, gr growing up, what were some of the shows that just absolutely knocked you on your ass and potentially put you on the trajectory of, of becoming a musician yourself? Um, I, so for me, I started playing guitar when I was really young. So I was playing guitar for a few years before I ever went to a show. So like I knew that it was what I was going to do. So nothing inspired me to want to be in a band because I was that was always clear in my mind. But two standout shows for me were Slipknot at Reading Festival in 1999. No, it was 2000. It was still on their first record, and I was like, I don't know, 13 years old. And I remember me and my friend were just like, it was the original Silosis guitarist. We were just like at the back where the sound desk was, just like, oh, we're kids. Like, we're just going to get killed if we go anywhere near the front and then when they started it was the loudest i'd ever seen like a band and they had metallica's sound like big mick doing the sound for them i don't know why i know that and it was like the heaviest thing ever and we were like this is too good so we just ran to the front and it was incredible and not that i'm obsessed with slipknot but the second one is going to see ozfest i think it was in 2001 so which is just a one show in the uk just like um one big festival and uh Slipknot came out and it was before the second record came out and they played like half the songs off Iowa before they were released. So no one knew any of these songs. So they were playing mm -hmm. like Heritage Camp and Disaster Peace. And I remember coming out of the new metal period with bands like Korn were getting like more commercial and softer and you know, Slipknot were huge at the time. And part of you is just like, oh, it's all going to go downhill from here. It's just going to be like, they're going to do what Korn did. And they just, yeah, they keep saying it's going to be heavier, but yeah, right. And then they play all these songs with blast beats and double pedal. And I was just like, as a fan, thank you. Like, that is exactly what I want. Like, I want heavy shit. I like it when bands get heavier. So like, same with Pantera. I never got to see Pantera, but um, just looking at their trajectory of like every album, like from Vol yeah. Far Beyond Driven was heavier than Vulgar. Great Southern Triangle was even heavier again. Like that's why they were big because metal fans like want that. Like you, metal, metal bands have a mistake of getting big and then going, oh, well, let, let's go radio rock. And I'm just yeah. like, no, I like you because it's fucking heavy. Um, so like 
that that feeling of hearing those songs of fire were live was just like thank you like this is what mm. i want i want especially at the time i was getting into like um a lot of death metal stuff like morbid angel and cannibal corpse and so yeah i was just like really um stoked so those those two shows seeing slipknot um they, i didn't see a lot of shows back when i was a kid it was just like festivals um like those ones so like Reading festival that was never too much like super heavy stuff but those were like some early ones as a kid that were yeah big for me it's funny i noticed your hoodie uh malevolence actually opened uh not fest which i went yes. to recently in brisbane and i was about three from the front row for slipknot and oh, you yeah. know the the big banner coming up, and you start hearing oh, yeah. opening with that country song that starts skipping and doot doot doot. Yeah, doot. Yeah. And um, I was looking around, going, "Holy shit, we're about to die!" Like it is just, yeah. it was fucking insanity. Uh, ah, yeah. dear, I love it. Um, Josh, thank you so much for your time today, man. This has been awesome. No worries. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, man. All the best. Big, big time in your life, man. Yeah, embrace it and just, yeah. Yeah, I should be, hopefully, I can't say what it is, but hopefully be in Australia in uh, the first half of next year. So Unreal, man. Hopefully see uh, you then. Awesome, man. All right. Cool. Take care. Right. Take care, man. Cheers. Bye. See you.